But I have a thing that's called fail. So it's fear always interrupts legacy. What was the legacy before me? I don't see it. Because I never met my father, I'm looking at, okay, my grandmother went to prison. Dang. My mother went to prison. I went to prison. So if things align, that means my child gonna go to prison. Yep. Okay, I gotta, I gotta disrupt that. What do I have to do to be that mass disruptor? Because not only did I go to prison once, I came home and got in trouble again. Mm. And was facing another 25. I gotta learn new behaviors personally. Like I gotta unanchor myself from all these traumas that I have, all these mindsets that I have. I gotta unanchor myself from everything that tells me that I can't be successful. Yeah. It has to work or it has to work. Man, welcome to Circle of Greatness. Um, man, I'm excited about this episode, man. I get the opportunity, right, to bring you one of the most prolific entrepreneurs. I call him a philosopher um, and just all around amazing guy. I had an opportunity to go witness just greatness when I first met him. Man, I flew down to Florida, didn't know him from a can of paint. I pulled up on him. And when I say we've been locked in every since, um, Y'all, I get the opportunity to bring you somebody who I look at as a friend, a friend's whore. He teaches me finances, teaches me about the stock market, and the number one educator on all things stocks and finances, my brother, Wall Street Trapper. What's up, dog? What's good, brother? How Thank you feeling? You. Amazing. Thank yeah, you for man. coming on, bro. How man, you feeling? I'm good, man. Glad yeah. you had me here. Um, I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, thank you, you know what bro. I'm saying? And I was on time this morning. And you were. Uh, and listen, man, I appreciate you because I know when you do podcasts, you go platinum. It's hard to get you on, on podcasts. You know what I mean? <laughs> you don't get on everybody. So I want to say, you do Ellen's, all the big stuff. So I want to say right, thank right. you for getting on your guys' podcast. No, that's podcast, good. You know, it's, uh, I don't even feel like this is a show. I just feel like I'm having a conversation with my but brother. That's all we doing. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So... You know, that, this was easy work. Just like, yeah. all right, babe, what time I got to be here yeah. for, man? Yeah, I, know, pre I, I pulled up, saw the truck outside. I said, bet. Yeah. We, it's up. We it's on up. time. We on time, man. Yeah, My, man. I think, I think that's important, too, that uh, that's how you set a standard for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, being mindful of your time and other people's time. Yeah. Right? Like, time is our greatest asset. We know that. So, for me, I'm at a point in my life, man, where I just want to maximize my time. Yeah. So I'm running late. That sets the show off. That yeah. sets the show back. But also it sets me back whatever else I got to take care of, man. So just being a good steward of my time. Yeah. And um, that's my greatest asset. And it's, it's important for me to, to be that way because I mm. lost 10 years of time. Mm. So I may, I may, I may uh, like protect my time a little bit more than the average person. Right. Right. Because I'll never get those back. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And, and I can't, no matter what I did. So moving forward, especially in the space I'm in now, like I get up earlier. Now I'm not about to be like, I get up at four o'clock, I do this, I do that. But I'll get up a little earlier. Like if I gotta get, if I gotta bring my daughter to school at six. So I mean, maybe 6.30 to get her there on time. I'll get up at 5.45. Wait, yep. I'm not rushing and she not rushing when yep. she get up. Yep. So it'll give me time to get her up at maybe like 6.15. She gotta be at school at No, 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 so you know you we moving out. because okay. I'm moving. Yeah. I'm, it's a transition. Gotcha. So I'll make sure we lead a house. If we lead a house at like 645, that's good. But that gives us 30 to 35 minutes to eat. You know, she's a little yeah. sluggish yeah. in the morning. Yeah. Right? But it's me preparing, me setting the tone for my day. Yeah. If I get up late, I'm late to bring her to school. Now I'm late and moving around. Yeah. So it's just, so that's just played a part in that, man. It's yeah. just, just going my time a little bit more. Let me ask you something. Because you said you lost 10 years. I want you to kind of talk about how, you know, how that happened. But what I really want in addition is how can we get people to act as if they don't have time? Mm. Like you're operating at such a high level one, because you feel like you lost time and mm -hmm. you know, you don't got time, mm -hmm. but so many of us are operating bro at this. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll mm -hmm. do it next week. I'll do it next. You know how many people say they was going to start their business this year or mm. last year and they still haven't started yet mm. because they don't really respect time. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of, I'm trying to figure out how can we make people understand that you have to do things in the now, mm -hmm. not tomorrow. So the biggest thing, what I've learned mm. is people, there's a level of comfort, even when people don't have the life they want. Yeah. Even when people know they need to do certain things. So if a per let's just say this, a person is out of shape, right? And they know they need to go to the gym. So they know the health benefits of going to the gym, yeah. but they probably won't go to the gym until something drastic happens. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right? Until the doctor says, yo, you, if you don't start losing weight now, you know, this is going to happen. Some, something real, like, far is going to happen. Yeah. And so what ha- that's, that's what people happens in people's everyday life. What happens is you have to be provoked. Yeah. It's something I like to say. Mm. Like, you have to be provoked in order to make progress. What provoke me? So provoke is saying something has to happen in your life that makes you say enough is enough. Yeah. Right? So I had a situation where my cousin was dealing with this guy. And we grew up together. So I grew up raising her. When I was in the streets, it was just me and her. And so anytime she had an issue, she would call me. And I would go run. I'm taking care of it. Whatever it was. But this happened as I was on this journey. So I said, cuz, she was, I said, cuz, check this out. She was married to the dude. I said, cuz, check this out. I can't risk it. Mm. I can't risk it. Yeah. And I've seen you go back to situations I've helped you out of. Wow. At this point, I have a spot for you to come to if you're ready. Mm-hmm. She came. It's because at a moment she made a decision. She was provoked, like, yo, I don't want this dude to put his hands on me no more. Yeah. So being provoked not only has to be a drastic situation happening to you, but now you got to start understanding your worthiness. Yeah. Right? And people don't understand how worthy they are for the life that they say they want. Right? So if it looks good for me to say, yeah, Neil, bro, I'm going to go make $10 million. But do I feel like I'm worthy of that? Mm. Like, talk is good. Yeah. But how do you feel? Do I feel like I'm worthy of going get $10 million? Yeah. It ain't, it ain't that I only have the skills, right? Like, we got what we need in us, but it's the feeling assured of oneself. Yep. Like, when I was homeless. Yep. Like, and I and I know it's crazy. I didn't know you was homeless. Yeah, I was homeless. Yeah, no, I for, for that on two different times. Yeah. But there's a, there's a thing that I listen to people on social media now. It's like the thing to say. Yeah. I was homeless. Right. Or yeah. uh, I went to jail. Yeah. Right? But my track record has it. Like, I went to prison at 16, but prior to that, when I lost my mother, my mother went to prison. My grandmother passed away. I had nowhere to go. Right. So you lost your mother to prison. Yep. Grandma passed away. Yep. Where, where did you go? To like I have nowhere to go. So I was your living dad, with- no, no dad? No, I've never met my father. Mm. Ever. So I'm trying, at that moment, like, she went to prison. They Boom. didn't say, take you, put you on no, a, some No, so what happens side. is, so my mama is um, gay. Yeah. Right. So I was living with my mom's girl at the time. You knew she was gay at the my time. My mom been gay my whole life. But I'm saying, when did you recognize? Because I, I was didn't, young. My 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 uncle was gay. Small, but I didn't even know what that. I didn't know what that thing. No, nah, I, 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 I knew that at a young age. Was. Yeah, I knew that at a young age because she always was with women, and my family was kind of upfront with me about that. And y'all, let's, was, let me be clear. It's not. It's just, I just want to say, ain't nothing wrong being gay. Nah, I just don't I, want I, nobody I, to I, take man, that. I just, nah, I, like it was cool with me. I'm saying I don't want nobody to take the pie wrong. Like, oh, oh no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. So my mom was my mom was gay so mm-hmm. i was like cool with it it didn't yeah. even bother me yeah. like and at, at, i'm gonna be real with you at some point it just was the normal yeah for me i wasn't right. tripping but a situation happened was when my mama went to prison i was living with her girlfriend and she mm-hmm. put me out wow she put me out at 16 no i was 14 14 yeah she put me out mm. and so at this point it's like all right bet and my uncle and them lived in Delaware, and that's a whole nother story. I went out there, but because I had, I hadn't gotten in so much trouble, I wasn't used to being in a normal setting, structured setting. So I caused havoc, and so I was homeless even before I got out there. I'm talking about really living in an abandoned house. Like I had moments where I would go to the thrift store. I remember I never forget this. Like my it's vivid. I went to the thrift store. And they had this insulated doghouse in there. Mm. And I remember getting the doghouse and putting the doghouse in the abandoned house and sleeping in the doghouse because it was insulated. Mm. And I bought the blanket out of there. But because I saw my mama hustling, I knew how to hustle. Right. So I wasn't. When you said hustling, she was hustling. My mama was selling crack. Got it. All right. Okay. I watched my mama sell crack my whole life, yeah, man. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and if I'm being honest, so how I got on was the lady she was dealing with at the time, I stole about eight grams of crack from her. Wow. 
And when she put me, I was like, all right, bet. I went, I knew what her spot was. I hit up for like eight, nine grams of crack. I was like, all right, bet. I knew mm-hmm. I had me about $600 worth of, yeah. I just got to go sell the product now. Right, you right, know what right. I'm saying? That's how I really, you know, it was in survival mode. Yeah. Right? But what happens is, in those moments, I call those dry, as I'm older now, that's like the wilderness. Those are dry moments. Yeah. Those moments build character for you. Right? And those are the moments where you draw from. And so those are the moments that provoked me. Yeah. Those are the moments that make me say, I bet this will be doing yeah. right. This is not the, the it thing for me to say, like I'm homeless and I went to prison. No, this was my life. So when I look at where I'm at now, everything provokes me. Like I know what my lowest level looked like. Yeah. Right. Like nobody was there for me in that moment. I remember doing the 10 years in prison and it's hard mentally, emotionally and spiritually to do 10 years in prison, bro. I got one visit while I was in prison. 10 years, bro. I got one visit. Wow. Bro, you don't you don't even know like how emotionally I'm watching people go to visit and I'm like, damn, they ain't gonna never call my name. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm watching that. Like I'm watching people, you know, and I'm not mad at my family for it. I yeah. put me in there. Yeah. I took responsibility for that. Yeah. But I'm watching my homies and them get money all this and stuff, and I'm like, damn, like I ain't nobody send me no money. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like my uncle would send me something when he could, but he got a family. I can't. So I'm like, all right, bet. Yeah. So the hustle was just in me. You know what I'm saying? And so I've always put myself in a situation where I bet, like, we know what our lowest moment looked like. So everything moving forward is progress. Everything moving forward. I'm provoked to be better. I'm provoked to be the first generation man. Yeah. I'm provoked to be successful. Yeah. I'm provoked when something don't go right. Boom, I'm provoked. I got to keep going. Yeah. Right? So, and for me, that's what provoked. That is the drastic, the drastic thing is going back to that. Right, that's the drastic. You remember yeah. you slept in that? Remember yeah. you did? You remember what the 10 years felt like yeah. lonely? That's the provoke. What happens? So now I'm never comfortable. Mm. I'm never comfortable, and not in a way where I'm not appreciative or grateful, but I'm never so comfortable with I feel like I've done enough. Yeah, that's good. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I think that when we when we circle back and we talk about what, what happens with people, I think people make one step on a ladder and they feel like they've done enough. Mm, yeah. But you you fact. can never take one step on a ladder to get to the top. I almost fell victim of that. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I know I started making ten thousand a month, now on eleven, twelve. Mm. I was like, I'm rich. Yeah. You know, you make ten thousand as an entrepreneur a month. You That's rich, good. man. It's good money. Went 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. I'm like, oh. If you don't keep doing the thing, yeah, and what I was doing, it don't keep, it don't just stay there. Mm-hmm. So I said in my mind, it would never happen again. That's mm-hmm. why I stopped. Similar to what you said, like you just keep going. I got a concept called no scoreboard watching, mm. where I just keep putting up the shots and I'm not counting them. As soon as the the game is done, which is my day. It's a new game the next day, Facts. and I don't worry about what happened the previous day. You got to put up some new points Facts. on the board. So that changes the game. It got to be a mental switch that got to happen for that to work mm-hmm. for people because comfort start happening when you start hitting certain targets, mm-hmm. certain numbers you like. Mm-hmm. But I love the, the idea that you go back to where you was at. Like, oh, I can't go back I can't there. go back. So yeah. I have a thing that's called fail, right? So it's fear always interrupts legacy, mm. right? So fear always interrupts legacy. Yeah. And so for me, when you look back, like what was the legacy before me? I don't see it. Yeah. And the legacy, when I look at, because I never met my father, I'm looking at, okay, my grandmother went to prison. Dang. My mother went to prison. I went to prison. So if things align, that means my child going to go to prison. Yeah. Okay, I got to I gotta disrupt that. Mm. I got to be the disruptor. Right? And so on the journey... Is like, what do I have to do to be that mass disruptor? Because not only did I go to prison once when I went to prison, I came home and got in trouble again mm. and was facing another 25. You know what I'm saying? So right. like, I right, and God bless me to beat that. And so now I have to be a massive disruptor. I got to be so disruptive and I got to learn new behaviors personally. 
Like, I got to unanchor myself from all these traumas that I have, all these mindsets that I have. I got to unanchor myself from everything that tells me that I can't be successful. Yeah. I'm going to be a dope boy. I'm going to be a gangster. I'm the realest, right? I'm going to do this with all the feet. I got to unanchor myself from all those toxic behaviors and all those traumas so I can break that. I can be that massive disruptor. Yeah. Because if I don't, I already know what's ahead of me. Okay, yeah. bet you're gonna probably not gonna see 30. If you're you see it, you're gonna be in prison, right? You don't wanna be the person with all the kids that's so I'm like, all right, bro, like trap, we gotta we gotta change something, bro. Yeah. And this and when you make that decision to change something, when was that? <sighs> so it's crazy. So after I caught my second charge, this is about 2010. This after you already did 10 years? This after I did the 10 years. I Got come it. back home and start hustling. Yeah. It's what I know. Yeah. It's a learned behavior. So 10 years, you, that, it never switched like, yo, I nah. just did 10 years. Nah. I got to go out and do something different. Nah. So mm -hmm. what happens is, man, life always punches you in the face, man. Yeah. Like, you go to prison and you have this idea of what you're going to do when you get home. Yeah. But for me, I'll be honest, man, I was young when I went to prison. I was 16. Mm-hmm. And I hadn't seen anything refreshing, right? So I hadn't seen, I don't, I didn't know what a successful black man looked like outside of football, baseball, basketball, rap. And I felt like, you know, I, I wasn't fast enough to play football. Um, I didn't have the athletic skills to play nothing else. And I, I wasn't that good of a wordsmith to be studying the craft to play, to be a rapper. And so then at that point, man, the, the the people who gave me the game because I didn't have a father was the hustlers. And so now you got other men. Watch this. You have other men, black men, who have their own traumas, and now they're teaching me from their traumatic life experiences. Mm. Right? So they're teaching me how to go through the world as a traumatic black man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'm because I don't have a father figure to guide me. I'm everything they telling me is 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 what I'm judging basing yeah. my life on. Yeah, right. And so now I'm coming home. I'm like, bet I'm just about to be a gangster. This is mm. my life. Yeah, this is my life. Wow. Right. But it wasn't. So after I beat the charge, um, me and my homie, God bless his spirit, man. He was a brother. We was we got cool in prison, and. So I, I was good with hitting licks. Yeah. So that's like robbing other dope dealers and stuff, right? That was my thing once, because once I caught the charge, it was like, all right, bro, like we not about to hustle no more. Yeah. I'm setting myself up. Yeah. I, I don't got no money to pay for another lawyer. Yeah. That broke me. Yep. And my mindset was simple, man. Like if I rob another hustler, and it, you know, and that was a smart move, though, robbing, uh, robbing others. Well, just, it's dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know, but you know, and you because they can't go report it. So I think and, you told but, me that, before. and that's it. Like, yeah. so, like you can't go to you can't go to the police on me. Yeah, but it's dangerous because now we plan, we plan it in the street, right? But at that time, you don't realize how like idiotic that is. Yeah, facts. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And in my mind, like, bet I'm willing to I'm willing to go out for it. you, whatever it is. And, and again, it's the mindset from the environment mm -hmm. that teaches you that this is okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? traumatic men. Yeah. And the, the men who like, yo, like, once you start hustling, I don't care what you're doing. You fair game. Now, it doesn't help that because when I, I went to prison because somebody robbed me. Mm. And I shot him. So I don't, I'm back in the same cycle again, bro. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And in my mind, like, this is life. This is how life goes. Yep, I see people playing sports, being successful, but I'm not relating to them. This is the life cycle for me. I'm in this pond. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a shark, right? But I ain't a guppy either. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm something between a swordfish. You know, I've been there. You feel yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so me and my homie hit a lick, man, and it kind of went bad. And... um. The dude got the ups on me, and my homie saved me because while the dude had the pistol on me, my homie walked in, and he was like, hey, check this out. I can't tell you not to shoot my dog, but it's going to be two dead bodies down there yeah, instead of one. 
Right. The second option is, bro, you let him go, we both walk off, you live, and we good. Yeah. And so, again, this is a situation where God is with me. Yeah. And in my mind, in that moment, I was just like, damn, this how I'm about to go out. Mm. Damn. It's over. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And again, God was with me again. So I get out of that situation. I remember me and my homie getting to the car and the money that we got from it, I gave it to him. Mm. I said, here, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm out, bro. I still got money from it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, was the, that was the plan. I thought, yeah. like, look, we're going to take this bread. Yeah. Whatever you got right there, and I don't want to really get too deep yeah, into it. Yeah, Whatever you yeah, got yeah. right there, you keep that. Yeah. Whatever we got right here, we good, bro. Yeah. But is your life worth that? Right. I got you. And so, you know, one thing about the street is, man, everybody can have a gun, but if I get if 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 the gun get pulled first, you ain't you it's like not having that. Right. And so I just was the dude was just like that. And I remember getting to the car and I just told my homie, man, I'm good, bro. Done with. I'm done, bro. Yeah. And my homie like, man, you tripping, man. It's part of the game, man. Yeah. We good. This is what we do. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, nah, bro. I did the 10. I beat the charge. I done got through all kind of other stuff. This is the last straw for me, bro. Yeah. Like, I'm good, bro. And that was the decision I made. That was the decision I made. Like, all right, bro, like, we about to switch it up. Hey, stop what you're doing. I know you're watching this episode. I want you to go to sevenfigurevirtualeventebook.com. I'm gonna say it again, seven figure virtual event ebook.com. I had the privilege this year to help multiple people do six and seven figure days leveraging virtual events. And I put together a seven step process that's gonna walk you through a step by step by step. And once you're done with that book, if you're like, Neo, I wanna learn this a lot more in a deeper sense, I want you to go to mastermindwithneo.com. This is one pillar of my mastermind, right? We got five different pillars that we teach. This is just one pillar, how to dominate virtual events, right? So if you're interested, go to mastermindwithneo.com and book a call with my team to see if you are a good fit to join our mastermind. Let's go. We got to do something different. And, and the thing about the streets is the streets are instinctive. Meaning, like, a lion is a lion by instinct. Mm -hmm. He don't got to think about being a lion. He wake up, I'm a lion. Raw. You know what I'm saying? Is it? It's, it's instinctive. The minute the lions start thinking about that, they got hyenas out here, man. They might eat me. It's the minute the lion loses. Mm. You no longer be the king of the jungle. Mm. You're done. Yeah. You, you, you've you just now lost your spot on the chain. And that's what happened with me. In that moment, I started thinking about the consequences. Mm -hmm. And I knew the minute that I started thinking about the consequences, I wanted out. I ain't wanted no more. You know what I'm saying? I was like, man, I'm good, bro. And my dog, and my, my homie wound up dying two years later. Um, not from the street, but from sickle cell. Yeah, I remember you um, mentioned Yeah, that. from sickle cell. I love him, man. But that was my transition, bro. That was that was, that was was God planting a new seed in me, man. Yeah. You know Crazy. what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and I'm so thankful to be here. Yeah, yeah. In the full circle, being able to talk to people like you, like 500 you know, and I tell y'all all the time how important y'all was to me on my journey. You know, even when I was in New Orleans, because I saw, I saw that, you know, I was becoming successful. I saw that my voice was becoming a voice. Yeah. I knew exactly who I wanted to talk to because I wasn't the only one. Yeah. Bro, there's so many dudes in the street that want out. Yeah. There's so many women that's stripping and you know, prostituting and doing so many things that they want out, bro. Yeah. But that's all they know. Mm. And and as society, you judge them because you don't understand it. And it's easy to be like, you know right from wrong, but what if this the only thing you know? I never thought about it like it's that. It's the only thing you know. Yeah. All I know how to do is hustle. And so you trying to tell somebody that hustle, go get a job. Bro, everybody I know that had a job was broke. Mm. I ain't never had, I ain't never saw nobody in that era that had a job that was doing better than the dope dealers. So you want me to trade the image of freedom? At least I feel a bit free. That's that's how they looking at it. You know, I'm touching money. It may not even be all mine, but they touching money. They running through money to go do that. Man, I'm not doing that. Mm. And then most of them, once you, I just told my homie this this morning when he was cutting my hair. 
I said, bro, I realized how being an entrepreneur saved my life. It saved my life because, bro, as a black man in America, with an attempt murder on robbery on your jacket, yeah. it ain't too much they gonna let me do. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. It ain't too much. So I got to transition into being an investor. I got to transition into entrepreneurship, bro. Yeah. Ain't too much they going to let me do. Right. You feel right. me? Yeah. So the average person in the street, by the time they 13, they done already had to cob out for a charge. So they already got some what type cob of- cob out mean? What mean they got to take a plea bargain on it. Right. They got to take a plea for a deal on a crime. Now at 21, they already got a felony. The world already looking at them wrong. Yeah. The female, she already got some shoplifting or something on her jacket, prostitution, whatever. They looking at her wrong. Ain't too much she can do. All right, she now she about to go do hell. What if she don't want to do hell? You feel me? And so it's, it's easy for people who've never been in those situations to judge or to say, I wouldn't have did this. I wouldn't have did that. Well, you, you ain't me. Mm. You feel me? Yeah. And so, like, trying. And so that was my voice. That's what Wall Street Trap was about. It was about, you know, and I've grown in that time. But Wall Street Trap was started because I wanted to tell people in the street, yo, there's a different way. Mm. Let's Look, I ain't trying to tell you get out the street. That ain't my thing, right? There's a billion other people. What I come to tell you is, yo, if you in, if you in the street, bro, you're going to get killed. Yep. You're going to go to jail. We already accept that reality, mm -hmm. right? We we accepted it. It is what it is. Yeah. And some people might be like, that's wrong. Nah, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. I get it. Yep. Check this out, fam. That be, once you put your re-up money on the side, hey, go get, go invest. Put some money in the stock market, bro. You know what I'm saying? That, that money going to work for you. Love, if you on that pole, listen, if you got to pay the madam because people don't be knowing how the strip club be going, once you play the, the house mom or her money, look, go put some money in the stock market for you, love. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, once you pay the house money, her money, big. once you pay mom her money, cool. Go put some money up for you because this ain't it either. Yeah. Like, that's what Trap started for. That's what I was all about in the beginning. I'm still about yeah. that. But I realized that there was more people experiencing poverty from different angles. And so that's, for me, bro, like, that was, again, I go back, that was me being provoked. Yeah. Me almost losing my life and just saying, I'm thinking about the consequences done. Yeah. And did you have your daughter there? Mm -mm. So okay. that was, that was that really the pivot. Provoked. Yeah. So that was the pivot entirely. Yeah. yeah. So once I stopped um, hustling, I started working. Is that the uh, stadium I job? I started was building the stadiums and power yeah. plants. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I would see you with, had the gold, gold tooth up on I top of the I had the gold the, uh, teeth. I'm three, yeah. When I built the Falcon Stadium. Yeah. But I had them built hospitals before. Yeah. I had them did my thing. Now, they, and they gave that job with the record. Yeah. So because as an iron worker, that's like, you know, that's, construction is for anybody. Anybody. Got it. Yeah. Construction is for anybody. You this. just need, you willing to do, you got to think about it, bro. Think about this. So, construction is so dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> bro, construction is dangerous, yeah. bro. And you got to remember, I'm building stadiums and power plants, so I done took the danger to another level because I'm three, four, five hundred feet in the air yeah. every day. Crazy. You feel me? I learned that craft. But I felt good at it because I was making like 2000 1800 a week, but I'm working six, seven days a week, 10, 12, 14, 16 hours a day. Yeah. But at the time, I ain't had no little one, so I'm like, bet, like, yeah. this, this is it. You I'm know up. what I'm saying? I'm up. I ain't tripping. Yeah. But in my heart, bro, I'm not going to lie, I always was a hustler. Mm -hmm. And so my it's a difference between my grind and then because now I'm, I'm not good with authority. Again, I don't, I don't know nothing about therapy and all that, so I'm not good with authority. So when the people tell me that, I'm like, man, you tripping, man. You know, what I, mean? I don't know how to deal with that. I don't understand this compliance. Yeah. And so, you know, I used to tell the people like, man, I'm about to take off. They'd be like, you can't take off. But like, man, you can't tell me because I had done got so good at it, mm -hmm. right? Like, we got to go 300 feet in air. Bet I'm first one up there. Yeah. We got to go 400 feet. To bet I'm up there. Yeah. 
Right? The average person like, mm, I ain't going up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm up there. I'm cowboying. Right? I'm with it. So that was the so that was the next step on my journey. But then when I had my daughter, bro, I realized that being in her life was the most important thing for me. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't have a father. And I didn't want another man raising my child. And I didn't want my child to not grow up not knowing me. And so I said, all right, I got to pivot. And I went to work one day and they uh, they told me cut my beard off. And I said, nah, that ain't it. That ain't going to work. A part of me was, I always said that entrepreneurs are crazy. That's a fact. Are we crazy? We some crazy people. Because no money in entrepreneurship is guaranteed. None. Zero. It's not guaranteed money. Yeah. Not success is not given. For every one entrepreneur that succeeds, there's a hundred that fail. Yep. Every day. Mm -hmm. Maybe a thousand. Yep. But what happens is, again, provoke. What do I want? You know, I could make $120,000, $30,000 a year doing iron work. At the time, I was 33. So I could do this for another, you could retire at 65. Yeah. All right, this is the life, right? I've I've some kind of way managed to get the job that has a pension, that has a retirement, but at what sacrifice? Yep. Mm. Even though I'm not in the street and even though I'm not jail, I'm only seeing my daughter one weekend out of a month, one weekend out of every two weeks. Yep. That ain't being a father. Being a father, I mean, I'm just throwing money. That ain't enough. Yeah. And I wanted to be there. I wanted to set the tone. So I gave it up. I said, man, I'm good. Mm. I'm not cutting my beard. I'm going to take my stuff and I'm going to leave. Is that, did you write the first, because I want to say you created your first stock book while on the job or after mm -hmm. you left? I was on a job. So I started uh, maybe like 2015, I started taking stock serious. So I learned it while I was in prison. But I started taking it like really you said serious. You was talking with some smart dude. And yeah, yeah. The criminals, the smartest people. Bro, they're the most creative. Bro, there's so many. But so let's think about it. And not to go back there, but even to run a criminal enterprise, you got to be smart. Yeah. Not only are you ducking the police, that's your main duty. The second thing you're doing is you ducking street dudes. Yeah. And then you ducking women. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah, three people. And then you got to make sure the people in your organization that you rocking with lawyer because jealousy is not a thing. Yeah. Bro, six out of ten people that get killed in the street get killed by somebody they know. Wow. This is a fact. Yeah. This is this is realistic. Mm. Very rare are you getting killed by a stranger. You get killed by somebody you know. Yeah. And so to run that whole operation, bro, to be in that game, bro, it's, it's, a, it's a lot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot. And so I wrote my ebook. You know, again, I'm telling my homies about hustle. I'm telling them about that. So I wrote, I wrote two ebooks, and then um, so I had two ebooks, and I had just thought I think I had about five thousand followers on the ground, and um, I quit the job, bro. Crazy. I quit the job, and I made one phone call that was important to me was my daughter, mama, bro. I called my daughter, mama. I said, "Hey, check this out. I just quit this job." I said, "I'm a still." I said, I need you to help me in this sec in this situation. She was like, what's up? I said, I'm going to pay for the nursery, but all the money that I was spending, you know, just taking, you know, sending you money every, which was about like $200 a week. Yep. I was like, man, I ain't going to be able to do that for a minute. She was like, I bet. What's, what, what you doing? I said, I'm all in. I'm all in on investing. I'm all in on teaching people how to build wealth through the stock market. And she was like, Go change the world. Mm. That was her words to me. That's all you need to hear. I know you got my back. Yeah. You ain't about to be tripping on me on no child support. You're not about to be trying to bring me to court or nothing like that. Yeah. I bet. And so I went and slept on my green eye sofa. Yeah. Slept on that sofa for two years, man. 
Mm. And just built the brand up. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? Just built it up. I mean, bro, you built it up to be like, I mean, just you, your story, Wallow's story, like what y'all done is just seem like, dang, like how the heck do they, like, y'all at the top of the game and what y'all do. But it seemed very hard for that to be an average person for that to happen. But it, y'all are two average people that just are provoked. I about to say it's Man. just it's just being it's being provoked is, and I know people in today's era you get tired of seeing people talk about they've been to prison and they came home and they did something. What happens is, I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. Like I needed that ten years. Yeah, mm. I needed that ten years. I needed that ten years for so many reasons, man. You know what I'm saying? I needed that ten years one to get closer to God because I built a relationship with God while I was in prison. Two because I had to get some structure in my life, man. Now, even though I came home and got with it, prison helped me being around so many different men with so many different mindsets and everybody got different attitudes and everybody got, but I met, I met some great people. You know what I'm saying? I met some great people. For instance, I met one of my homies, his name Rondell Goodman, Goody. Um, he introduced me to Islam and he told me something one day because I've always been an influential person. Um. I always just had, I had a way of convincing people of stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? And he said, he said, he used to call me Scooby. Because I was young, I was short. I was, you know what I'm saying? I ain't the tallest person in the world. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was short, so he used to call me Scooby. He said, say, Scoob, come here, man. I said, what's up, good? He said, man, listen. You're leading them dudes the wrong way. Why don't you try to lead them somewhat different? There's a power in what you have and you not recognizing it. And I remember him telling me this. He said, man, you got so much potential. And when he said that, man, it kind of just, you know, it kind of hit me. You know, when somebody just tell you, you feel like you just playing small. You know what I'm saying? You feel like you not living up to your potential. Kind of like telling me like, bro, like, what are you doing in life? What are you doing with yourself? Why are you not making the best of this opportunity to change your life, to do something different? And so, shit, I just was like, all right, bet. And so, you know, in prison, shit, we used to jack dudes for weed and, you know what I'm saying, all kind of wild stuff. But when he told me that, it's kind of like, damn. You know what I'm saying? So um, when you come from prison, man, you just have this different mindset about life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and not everybody, because some people use it as a crutch. Yep. For me, I use it as my, that's my provoking point. Yeah. Like, I don't never want to go back to that. I don't never want to go back to nobody, you know, dictating when I eat. Yeah. Nobody, dic I had to shut a bathroom. I have issues right now with, with my space, my personal space. Yeah. You know, I can't be around people too long because I, I done shared my space for so long. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I be wanting my own space. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, prison... I'm not saying everybody need to go to prison. Yeah, but <laughs> right. You know, I ain't trying. You no, know, you make you make the best, and you take the lessons from it. But it's definitely not designed to rehabilitate you. No, heck no, because you can't get no like you said, attempt armed robbery. You come home, you can't get a job nowhere. Yeah, yeah. So you got to go back to doing what yeah. you're doing. And then you said something important. You haven't seen nothing else, so you don't know nothing else exists. Yeah, like we we say, uh, exposure equals expansion. Yeah. You're not exp if that's all you exposed to. You said something earlier. I'm like, man, because sometimes I'll be like, yo, I've said in my mind, like, bro, why are you going to go back and do the same as that mm -hmm. thing? But I, I never realized that they didn't see nothing else. Oh, you don't see nothing else. So, and then you, you hoop dreaming. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like trying to convince somebody that they're worth a better life. But again, remember, I talked about this. To the person who want to be a millionaire, to the person who want to get ten million, do you feel you worthy of it? Yeah. Right, because there's a cap on that. Right, you you're not going like if a woman in a relationship and she feel like, and I'm not condoning this at all. But like if a woman is in a relationship and the dude is abusive, if she identifies that with love, then nothing you do can tell her get her out of that situation. Right. Until she's fed up. Yeah. Because at a point she's she doesn't feel like she's worthy of a different type of love. Mm. You feel mm. me? She don't feel like she's worthy of a different type of love. She'll make excuses to stay in that relationship. She'll defend that. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so a lot of times what we're doing is we're defending those limited beliefs. We're defending that unworthiness. We def- we're going to fight for it. We're going to make excuses for it. And then you got people like, nope, I'm going to get it. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to fail. It don't matter. Everything for me at this point is a learning experience. But nobody taught you how to be a multimillionaire. Yeah. Nobody taught you how to be successful. You went to the mentors. You got all that. You learned the lessons. That was to execute. Yeah. That's what the mentors taught you. Mentorship teaches you unless you get a different type of mentor. But you went to a lot of business mentors. So they taught you how to execute whatever business strategy you was doing. But when it came to just being a successful black man in America, you you had to learn that. You had to learn how to be a family. You ain't have your father. No, heck no. Bro, I commend you. I respect you on what you do for your wife, what you do for your kids. Bro, you you had to learn that on your own. And you still had to learn. You had to bump heads with your girl, your yeah. queen, yeah. a couple times, like, oh, I bet. You know, now she's your favorite subject outside yeah. of money. Yeah. Now being a family man is your favorite subject yeah. outside of getting money. Yeah. Because you understand the parallels. You yeah. understand how important I can be super successful if I make sure home is good. Bro, I study your stuff all the time. I be like, dog, oh, my dog just did this for his wife. That is cold blooded. You know and what I'm, I'm saying? And I'm still learning. I'm working on getting better. Yeah. We all are. Yeah. But, but and that's the thing with with all of us, bro. Like we are we are in the when people see us, man. They, you know they oh they successful. They want you know they want the Lambo. They want the Bentley truck. They want the Wraith. They want the big house, bro. I just want peace. Yeah. Mm. I just want happiness. Yeah. And and people be you can say, well, because you got the money. Bro, listen, I was, I'm telling you, I just want the peace. Yeah. I'm a, I'm gonna go be successful. I'm gonna go execute execute the vision. I'm a, I'm a visionary, bro. I got a studio, bro. I'm a million in the hole on it. Mm-hmm. I don't care. I see the vision. Mm-hmm. I just want the peace. You feel me? Yeah. People ain't willing to be a million in the hole to see the vision. See the vision. How, how do you hold on to your vision when everything, one of the things I tell people is hold on to your vision, but how do you hold on when everything is going wrong? Like how, like for me, it's like I, I've given myself, I'm, I'm at a different mental plane than a lot of people, but my, I, you know, it has to work or it has to work. I really mean that. Yeah. I became mentally unemployable. I've never in the last 15 years ever questioned, well, I wonder if this is going to work. Mm-hmm. I knew it was going to work. I just, I didn't know when. But how do you hold on to your vision when everything's going wrong? So, I- Hey, sorry to stop the episode. I know you're probably wondering, Neil, I always see you with that brand on. How can I be a part of it? How can I get the official gear of every entrepreneur in the world? What I need you to do is go to newaceos.com so you can get your gear. We got something for women. We got something for men. We got something for spring. We got something for fall. We got something for winter. We want to make sure you have the official gear of every entrepreneur in the world. Go to newaceos.com. But how do you hold on to your vision when everything's going wrong? So I think what happens is people don't really believe in the vision. Yeah. Mm. Like, like it, it is not as hot. So I always say that behavior is connected to belief. Yeah. So Ooh. behavior, behavior is married to belief. That's good. Right. Wow. Like behavior is married to what you believe in. So if I say, yo, man, I want to be the healthiest person I can be. Well, do I believe I can be that healthy person? And if I believe I can be that healthy person, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have behavior that's conducive to me being a healthy person. Meaning, yo, I can't be eating the McDonald's. Yo, I can't be eating candy all day. I can't drink the the, the drinks with the high fructose corn syrup. I can't eat at one o'clock in the morning because that, 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 that behavior isn't conducive to me saying what I believe. Mm. So if I tell myself, trap, Boom, we are building our media company. All right, cool. I don't care what nobody else doing. I don't care what nobody else doing, bro. When we walked in that studio, bro, it was empty. It was nothing. It had wires everywhere. I had to go in that visionary. Okay, this is what we doing. Okay, we're going to paint the walls. All right, I need to get a production team. I don't know crap about production. All right, let me go holler at some people I know who do production so they can give me the right way. Again, this ain't about to turn overnight. I got the building in January, bro. I ain't shoot the first show till August. Wow. 
Mm. I had to go in that studio. We had to put our own lights up. I had to put my own studio. I'm talking about, I ain't talking about just studio lights. I'm talking about regular turn the lights on so we can see. It's pitch black. Right. Mm. I had to put those lights all the way through there. I had to paint those walls. I had to bring somebody in to paint the walls. You got the whole warehouse space for the I had merch. To, I had to put lights back there. I had to bring my cousin in. Hey, cuz, here's my vision. Do you believe in it? I'm going to help you. You help me. Cuz, I believe. Move in. Cuz ain't got nowhere to go. My house is not ready. I, cuz been on the Airbnb since April. Mm. I've been paying for that. Mm. 3200 a month. And I got to pay him. Yeah. You feel me? I'm I'm in the vision. Yeah. The vision the vision cost you. Freedom is the most expensive thing you will ever buy. Mm. Ain't cheap. Having a vision ain't cheap. Being successful ain't cheap. It's expensive. Mm. It's going to cost you your old beliefs. It's going to cost you your old life. It's going to cost you everything. The problem is when people realize the expense of success and freedom, they settle. Mm. It's, it costs too much. Mm -mm, that I ain't willing to pay that. And so the price of not being free is your old life. Mm. Th that's the price. Yeah. And so for me, it's do you feel you're worthy? Yeah. I'm going to go back to that because it's not complicated. We have lack of belief in ourselves. We have lack of beliefs in our, I don't know nothing about this. I don't know nothing about media building a media company. Yeah. But that just because I don't know don't mean I don't believe I can build it. Mm. That's the difference. Just because I do not know it, it does not mean I don't believe I can't build it. Mm. Cause I can learn on the way. The mistakes are a part of the game. They ain't meant to discourage me. The mistakes is made to tell me how bad do I want it. Mm. You feel me? Fear finally exiting average reality. That's it. Yeah. Ain't nothing average about me. I'm above average. Mm. And it's not because I think I'm better than nobody. It's because I ain't willing to quit. Mm. I don't want to die. I said, I said, the most important part of your tombstone is the dash. Mm. It's the most important part. <laughs> it's the dash. Boy, snap. It's, it, you got the day you was born and you got the day you die. Those those are those two we can't do nothing about. And that's a guarantee. There's a guarantee. You yeah. can't return that. You can't extend that. But it's the dash is the most important part on the tombstone. Mm. What I did in that part. Wow. That's the most important part. What I did. That's going to tell you my legacy. I don't want on my tombstone he was a hardworking man. I don't want that. I want on my tombstone he was a life changer. Mm. He changed a family. Mm. Legacy, generational wealth, generational freedom, generational opportunity. That's what he did. He was a voice. Mm. He was change. He was disruptive. I want them type of words on my tombstone. Yeah. Not he was a hard working man. Yeah. That on I, I I let somebody down if that's all they got to say about me. Mm. I ain't saying what nobody else got to say about them, but if that's all they got to say about me, I let some people down. Mm. If my daughter can't say, yo, I'm good for the next 30 years after my daddy gone and my children good because not only did he leave us money, but he put a blueprint in place. He left us information. If she can't say that, I failed her as a father. Mm. So my expectations of myself is different. I got to exceed the expectation. I don't care about what society say. You ain't going to live past 31. I don't care about none of that. That's somebody else's expectation. That ain't mine. Yeah. Mine is, yo, I'm about to raise another millionaire because they let me touch the first one and see how I feel. I'm going to make some mistakes along the way. I may lose a couple million on the way trying to figure the game out. Guess what? I'm cool with that. Because I know every day I'm going to get up and swing. I'm going to swing for the fences. Every day I'm going to get up. Every time the bell rings, ding, ding, I'm getting up. I'm ready to fight. I ain't never questioning. Man, I threw the towel in. I ain't questioning it. Mm. I got fighting me, man. I'm like a pit bull, bro. This, I remember when I was young, man. When you see the pit bull scratch, wag his tail, that means he got some scratch in him. Right. Bro, I got scratch in me. I got infinite scratch in me. Right. Some of the people we look up to, people we looking up to right now, I done seen them tuck their tail. Mm. I done seen stuff get tight and they tuck, they get scared. Yeah. Bro, I'm scratching every right. time. Mm. I ain't never doubting trap, yo. 
I've been there. Superior belief. Man, I've been there. Yeah. Don't nothing, bro, don't nothing scare me but letting my child down. Mm. Don't nothing scare me but that. Ain't no man, and I'm not saying I'm the big bad wolf, bro, but when they're talking about belief system, yeah. we talking about belief, fam? Yeah. We talking about execution? Man, bro, listen. People might make more money than me. That's cool. That's cool. I'm cool with that. Bro, I was homeless, bro. Yeah. If you made 40 million and I made 3 million, bet. Guess yeah. what? I was homeless. Right. If you make 100 million, bro, and I made 2, guess what? I was homeless. Right. I'm cool. Right. I ain't in that race with you. So you can say you made more money than me. Guess what, bro? Salute you. Cool. But I ain't that no more. Mm. And so, and I know nobody in my family ain't never seen a millionaire before. Right. So guess what, bro? I'm on my journey. I'm scratching. Mm. First generation millionaire won't be the last. Come on, man. We normalizing it. Yeah. So I ain't, I ain't comparing myself. And I think that's another thing that hurt people is they scoreboard watching. Yeah. And comparing. You feel yeah. Oh, Neil got the Lambo. I want the Lambo. Bro, I don't want the Lambo. Yeah. I don't want the Lambo. I like seeing my dog pull up in the door. Yeah. Room, room. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, look at my dog. Ooh, he killing it. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? Yeah. My dog just bought his wife one. Ooh, that's yeah. cool. I don't got a wife. Yeah. I like that. Is it inspiration? Hell yeah. Mm. Is it competition? Hell no. Right. I'm competitive, yeah. but I'm competitive on beating what trap was. Mm. I'm competitive because I want to beat the version of trap that only knew the street. I'm competitive because I got now, I'm doing different things for my family. Right? So you can get all these people up here and I be listening to entrepreneurs. They get on a podcast, bro, and they be sounding amazing. Mm -hmm. Go, do this, do this, do this. I get up at 2 o'clock in the morning and I do this. Man, I bet. For me, it's like, yo, I get up probably like 6 o'clock, bro. You know, I'm going to work out. But guess what? For Christmas, you know, ever for Christmas, we were rent I rented a $50,000 mansion for my family. Mm -hmm. Six days. Mm -hmm. 50 bands spent another five six bands on grocery and bought everything else but guess what I did I gave them exposure mm. I gave them exposure yeah right they waking up boom they got the house it got the bowling alley in it right it got the golf the virtual golf in it mm -hmm. it got the game room in it it got the Olympic pool in the backyard. It got the jacuzzi. It got the fireplace. They got 14 bedrooms, so now nobody ain't sharing a bedroom. Everybody waking up to a master bed. Yeah, with a suite in it. With a suite bathroom in the room. with a bathroom in it. Mm -hmm. Chandeliers everywhere. Bro, I done, just that alone, we done made it real for him. Mm. Elevating the crib. We done made it real for him. Okay, let's take one day. Let's talk about financial literacy. We're going to make it real for them. Mm. Ex now I done exposed them. I can show you the text on my phone right now. My little cousin said, cuz, can we talk about the stocks? I won't open up my account. Bingo, we got them. Mm. Mm. Mine, mine different, bro. Yeah. Mine different. Yeah. I don't, I don't got to compare dollar signs with nobody, bro. I know the impact I'm going after. Yeah. Yo, we had to stop this episode. It is too good, right, to keep going right now. I need you to start executing on some of the things you got, and we're going to go ahead and do a part two. Let's go.